What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast. Today, we've got stuff to talk about. We've always got stuff to talk about. Uh, brief public service announcement. We have some content this week on the internet machine, as we always do. You're very obviously listening to this podcast on your favorite listening platform or watching it on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe. Leave a comment down below about something. Tell me how your dog is doing today. Um, we're going to have a stream Wednesday evening. That is Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then Sunday, 10 a.m. is what we're shooting for. Okay? Be there, be square. We've had a ton of fun lately. We went flawless on stream last week. That's effing right. Um, made World Series a couple days after. Not on stream, but we still made World Series. Um, I feel pretty good. Game's been playing reasonably well. So today we got some stuff we're going to talk, as we tend to do. First, we're going to review the August Monthly Awards program. And it is... It's neither a W or an L. It's in between, right? So let's let's explain what I mean here. The end card that you get, Mookie Betts, is a W. Clear as day, not even a question, a W card. In theory, you could argue that makes the entire program a W, right? That's why you play the program, to get this card. 103 contact right, 109 power right, 125 contact left, 110 power left. They didn't juice his vision or discipline, so that's good. They boosted his clutch, it was whatever. Um, 99 durability, because God forbid he gets hurt in Diamond Dynasty, it might as well be zero. Uh, 97 in the field, 96 arm, 99 accuracy, 99 reaction. An absolute demon in the field. He'll be diamond off the rip in right, second, left, and center. All of his secondaries. 72 speed, a little bit slow, but it's okay. 92 steal, 95 base running aggressiveness. You're not stealing bases with him. You might be able to sneak a base here or there, but that, that's not this card's purpose. If I had my way, I would have taken his fielding down just a tick and then given a little bit more to the contact versus right side. Um, but that is but the smallest critique. It is, it is almost a meaningless critique. This card is insane. Apparently, they reworked Mookie's swing a little bit on this card, or this year. I haven't noticed it, but I've been told. I love Mookie Betts cards. Last year's Mookie Betts collection card, his MVP was nuts. This card is, I think, a little worse attribute-wise, but at the same time, with his fielding, and this card is just nutty good. Nutty good. I had initially said I wasn't sure uh, where I would be playing Mookie, my first move was to put him on the bench, take Nelson Cruz off the team, who's been on the team for a very long time, P5 Nelson Cruz, and put him with Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts has less power versus left than Nelson Cruz, but a better swing, and he's a defensive replacement. Nelson Cruz is certainly not a defensive replacement. And, theoretically, Mookie Betts could pitch run. The reason I didn't want to start him at first is because I was raking with Austin Riley, who I recently got P5 and has been great in left field. Underrated in left field, honestly. Good defender, strong arm. But then I looked and I thought about it, and I feel like Mookie is the guy to start in left or right field right now. I have him in left field because he maintains his diamond, obviously, and putting Juan Soto in his primary in right keeps him usable because, God, he's bad in the outfield. Um, so I think that's my play right now. Mookie left, McCutcheon center, Soto in right. Austin Riley could be a defensive replacement late in games. I put Austin Riley in left. Mookie slides over to right. I think that's going to be my play for now. Again, this is subject to change because we're going to talk about this. But on Friday, we're getting a new program with 30 Legends. Kind of like we suggested uh, a couple weeks ago. So Mookie Betts, good card. Jim Tomei, who we've known about fucking forever. Instant bench bat. Not even a question. He's perfect off the rip against righties. 125 contact, 125 power. <laughs> Not terrible against lefties either. Parallel 5, he is very usable against lefties. You want to start him because you like Jim Tomei's swing? I won't argue with you. I think I would rather start George Brett at third or first, Josh Donaldson at third, Frank Thomas at first, or Ortiz at first. Um, I'm certainly missing people. Austin, did I say Austin Riley? I'd start Austin Riley at both corners, I think, over Jim Tomei. Jim Tomei, to me, is a fantastic endgame bench bat. Good card. W card. We got him too late. That part's an L. But the card itself, W card. Now we get into the stuff that's either mid or L. 
to be perfectly honest. 98 Alex Bregman looks no different than the low 90s Alex Bregman that we had. They just juiced up a couple little areas. You want to use him as a bench bat versus lefties? Fine. 125 contact left, 109 power left. But he's only got 90 power versus right. Third base is such a saturated position. First base is such a saturated position. Uh, this card is not... It's a fun events card is really what it is. Randy Arozarena, similarly, very good bench bat. Not great against righties. He's good, not great. Uh, he's fast. Excuse me, I burped. Um, so if you wanted to use a Rosarena as a pinch hitter against lefties or pinch runner or a late inning defensive replacement who can run, like there are combinations here. I see it, but it's a mid card. It's a, it's a mid card. And then fine, I went backwards. Zach Gallon, in my opinion, still should have been the lightning card. I'm not upset Mookie got it, so don't get confused by that. I think Gallon should have been the lightning card. Zach Gallon, very good card. He starts at 117 hits per nine. That's nuts high. He had 44.1 scoreless innings consecutive before the streak ended, I think yesterday, on Sunday. Um, I'm recording on Monday. So, if it was lightning, this card would be better. He suffers here because he doesn't have a sinker or two seam that moves the opposite direction as his other stuff. Everything moves into a lefty, away from a righty. His cutter is pretty good. He's got great break. Control is a little suspect. It's not perfect. It's not terrible, but it's kind of in that middle range. He was really hurt by 78 velo. 77 velo, I think, actually, is what he starts at. Um, it's too slow. His pitches are very readable. If he was a lightning card, we could have finagled with a little more. This brings me to my opinion that every month there should be a lightning hitter and a lightning pitcher of the month. Dylan Cease got hoed out of a card. Julio Arias could have gotten cards. Tony Gonsolin could have gotten cards. There are other pitchers who just get hoed. Everybody wants the lightning hitter. I totally get it. You use it more often. But give us a lightning pitcher also. Give it to us before the lightning hitter because theoretically it will be lesser in air quotes. Just a suggestion. Uh, now we go to the 96 overall pack. And these cards are just kind of... Bleh, bleh. Sometimes we get lucky. Sometimes we get a good reliever out of one of these henchman packs. Sometimes we get a sneaky starter. Maybe a bench bat, a pinch runner. Uh, Alexis Diaz. Other than like a semi-sneaky delivery, he just throws hard. Forder, sli uh, forder. Four seamer, slider, two seamer. He is literally a clone of Edwin Diaz, his brother. Minus the trumpets. And that's really it. Listen, fine card... Will I see it in ranked? Maybe once or twice, but this is not a good card. Christian Walker had a stellar month. I have him on one of my fantasy teams. He's been great. Randomly has a 99 in the field at first base. Talk about things that don't matter at all. Um, he's not good at the plate. He was top 10 in the league, according to his card. In, B, in batting average, home runs, runs scored, that's meaningless. WRC+, plus, that's a big deal, and war, meaningless for the card. 101 contact versus right, 101 power versus right, 86 contact left, 90 power left. This card's useless. It's literally useless. George Kirby, low-key, not bad. Has a cutter, has a sinker, 99 velo, 88 control with a 111 BB per nine. He's going to put it wherever the fuck you want. 91 hits per nine is on the low side. That hurts. K per nine, 84. That hurts. That's low. He's kind of sneaky. He's okay. I'm not advocating for you to use him all the time. If you wanted to give him a shot, go for it. This is the best, in my opinion, of the base round cards. Jeff McNeil. Okay. Maybe Kirby was the second best. Jeff McNeil's the first best. Jeff McNeil has max 125 contacts on both sides. Phenomenal swing. Very important here which means his power plays up. He is not going to hit moonshots all the time, but you'll, you'd be surprised at what he can lift out of the park. If not, he's a doubles machine, which is great. Uh, 90 in the field, which is awesome. He can play second, first, third, left, right, just about everywhere. 64 speed. You get him to P5, this, this guy's going to be a demon. He goes to 71 power right, 78 power left, with great fielding, 69, very nice speed. Um... Should you use him on your God Squad? I don't think so. If an event comes up that he fits the restrictions for, go ahead. He's a good card. Um, but, like, it's a fun card. Is it a meta card? Is it a usable ranked card? Not really. 
Lars Nupar has no idea how to hit. A, he's never seen a left-handed pitcher before. Never once in his life. 66 contact left, 65 power left. Had this card been absolutely nutty cracked against righties, he'd be a bench bat and a bench bat alone. But he's 103 contact right, 102 power right. Just not good enough. Lars Nupar, you've been hoed. Also, I look at this card and see his stats versus lefties or attributes versus lefties. How the fuck is he at 96? Someone explain. I have no idea. I don't have an earthly idea. Maybe it's that combo of 125 discipline and clutch that's juicing his ass up. I have no effing clue. Lars Nupar, cool player. Don't hate him. This card sucks. Lastly, Peter Fairbanks. He throws a sinker. He throws hard. That's enough uh, for you. I don't think he's usable, though, because I think the lack of a fourth pitch really hurts relievers. You don't see a lot of three-pitch relievers, and if you do, it's because, like, the dude throws gas and has a silly wind-up. This wind is pretty easy to pick up, and he throws. all he does is throw a sinker. You want to use him, I get it. There aren't a ton of bullpen options. I'm not going to fault you or make fun of you for using such a card. I will not be using it, personal opinion. So that is the August Player of the Month. It also is worth noting that they dropped who the Retro Lightning for September will be. Everyone get ready to arrive in your pants. Because it is 99... Here we go. Alfonso Soriano. This card is absolutely nuts. He smashes righties. Contact versus left is a little low at 102, but he smashes lefties too. 97 in the field. 89 speed, which is shockingly low for a Soriano card, but I think in 2007 he was starting to... His body was wearing down just a tad as far as speed and athleticism goes. Still a nuts player. Left, second base, center, right. I wish I was better with Alfonso Soriano's swing. I suck with it, something fierce. If I was good with it, he'd be in my outfield, no questions asked. No questions asked. This card's going to be insane. Um, but that's coming in, I don't know, fucking four weeks. So maybe I have time to practice and get good by the time it comes out. Uh, all right, guys. The, the cool stuff we want to talk about here, we're going to go to the calendar real quick. We very often look at the calendar on this podcast. I'm recording on Monday the 12th. On Tuesday the 13th, the day you're listening to this, you're getting Headliner Set 45 with a Prime Legend. No clue. Hasn't been revealed yet. If you collect three Prime Series players, you can get XP in the back of the old school program, which I finished already, as most people probably have. But if you're looking for some last minute XP, do that. Collect. Uh, also, it's double XP, so you get more. Not for that, but in general, it's double XP. Coming Thursday, super stoked about this. Roberto Clemente Day, celebrate the 50th anniversary of his final season, and you can get a retro finest Roberto Clemente. So this confirms several things. Number one, players are getting multiple 99s. Number two, an MVP or awards card does not preclude you from a retro finest. All cool things. The biggest question I have, how are they going to make Retro Finest Roberto Clemente? Because let's look at the base card we received earlier this year. A milestone. I said awards. I meant milestone. I have him P5. But look at him P5. If you have him and you've had him for a while, he's probably P5. Max contact right and left. 86 power right, 90 power left. Literally 99s across the board in the field with 77 speed. Known power hitter Roberto Clemente, question mark. The dude never hit more than 26 homers in a season, I think it was. We looked it up on stream the other day. And I would argue that 86 and 90 power is roughly equivalent to 26 home runs. Unless they scale it to the season. I don't know what else they could do to make him a retro finest card. It theoretically has to be better than his 3,000 hit milestone, right? Maybe they juice his speed. They give him, like, baseline 92, 93 power. You could pee it up to... Pee it up. That's a fun way to say it. You could pee it up to uh, 98. Like, I, do you make his bunt better? I, I don't... I do not know what you do to make the card better. Because theoretically, the Retro Finest card is going to be better than whatever other card exists. It would be downright silly to drop a worse Retro Finest card. So this is not a critique. I'm very excited and actually awaiting to see what Thursday's card looks like. If it is remotely better than this card, I think you have to start him. I think he even starts over Soto, and Soto gets moved to the bench. I might be in the minority on that opinion, 
but Clemente's swing was kind of okay early in the year. I hit 372 with this card in 366 at bats, largely Hall of Fame, a good bit of All Star too for events and whatnot, but largely Hall of Fame. So I'm excited. I mean, I thought this card was pretty nuts when they dropped it at the start of the game. So I, I, I'm interested. I'm certainly, certainly interested. We will learn more about that. We'll probably see the card on Wednesday and learn about it Thursday. And when, right before we get it. That's my guess. Uh, on Friday, we know the next featured program is coming out. 30 bosses. 30. Let's talk about that real quick. You guys are going to see my desktop for a second. All right, you guys see this here? This is my desktop. These are the first batch of cards dropped. The AL East is getting uh, uh, Tampa Bay Wade Boggs, which we basically guessed because they don't have many legends. Uh, Boston Red Sox Cy Young, a card zero people on this earth have asked for. I don't even know why we have the rights. Blue Jays' Sean Green is low-key kind of cool. If he hits lefties even a little bit, Sean Green's got a real nice swing. This card will be pretty good. Brooks Robinson, uh, unfortunately, mostly a waste. Look at the corner infield options we have. In the past, some Brooks cards have been okay. I don't think this one will be. 99 Jorge Posada, thank you, Jeebus. This card's gonna smack. My biggest problem I have with these cards, not these five in particular, but this series slash line or drop of cards, is they're not retro finest. I understand they're keeping the theme from earlier in the year. When it was the, uh, was it Faces of the Franchise. I get that we're sticking thematically with that. But it makes me incredibly upset that these are not Retro Finest cards. Maybe they were worried about flooding the game with Retro Finest. I don't know. I don't think these cards will be as good as they could have been if they were Retro Finest. Retro Finest Jorge Posada from 2007, I think was the year I've been highlighting, would have been the best catcher maybe ever in Diamond Dynasty. The card was, would have been fucking stupid. Instead, we're going to get a pretty mid to high mid Jorge Posada that is a good switch hitter, has a nice swing, but is not reaching his full potential. So that, unfortunately, is my opinion. And I'm still excited to see the rest of the cards. Like I said, at time of recording, Monday around 7 p.m. Eastern, those are the only cards we've seen. I will imagine they are revealing a division per day. Maybe one day we'll get two divisions. Um... But I think now that program is overshadowed on Friday by a massive, massive content day. We get a roster update. We pray for Corey Seager that he finally gets recognized as a good player. Home Run Derby X Legends travel to Seoul? Does that mean we get more cards? I don't know. But then look at this last bullet point here. This little tease, little, 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 little nipple tease. They're just kind of, you know, they lick their fingers. They're just kind of rubbing them a little bit. Are you collecting legends and flashbacks? There's going to be a massive collection Friday, boys and girls. I'm ready. I have every card except the retro finest Johnny Cueto. And whatever nonsense they drop. Friday. And of course the Clemente card. We'll get that. Um. Last time they did a big collection, they also dropped a lot of uh, Legends and Flashbacks, one per team. That's probably the only thing that's going to hamper me from getting this card day one. I will also be at an engagement party several hours away Friday. I will be back Saturday, so that's also preventing me from getting it day one. Um, but I mean, I'm excited for this. I'm super excited for this. Who could it be? This is not going to be an episode of me just guessing who it's going to be. But I do think we're going to get a pitcher. Okay? My guess? Book it. Print it. Send it to the newspapers. I think we're getting a retro finest. Bob Gibson. That is an out of left field pick. You could even say it's out of the pitcher's mound. I don't know how thrilled people will be with a starting pitcher as a collection. Last year people were not a fan, mostly not a fan, of Clayton Kershaw. But I have long since said that Retro Finest is the route to get the best usable Bob Gibson. There is still a chance he's revealed as the Cardinals legend of the franchise in the featured program, at which point my opinion is moot. But I just have, I have an inkling down in my gonads that it's going to be Bob Gibson. 
I don't know who else it could be. It won't be Mariano Rivera because he was a collection last year. So if you're thinking of which relievers it could be, it won't be him. Um, I don't know. Babe Ruth, he was a Takashi collection, though. So I don't know. There are certainly cards we need. Hank Aaron is a card we still need. And Hank Aaron would be a nuts crazy card. But the last collection was just an outfielder. Outfield, of course, does have three positions. That doesn't mean they can't make it Hank Aaron. I just don't know if they will. I do think we're getting a Hank Aaron soon. I would bet it comes in the featured program, though. I'm anxious to see who it is. We, of course, will talk about it next week. Um, but we'll see. This is a big content week. A lot of stuff is coming out. People are still going to be grinding player of the month. Some people are still grinding extreme, and that's okay. At this point in the year, when the game is getting a little stale, they're actually giving us some stuff that requires a little time commitment. Whether that time is exciting, spent grinding, or annoying, frustrating, or boring, that is entirely up to the individual playing the baseball game. Uh, but they're giving us stuff to work on. So guys, that is actually where I'm going to leave you. I know it's a little bit of a short episode this week. That was not necessarily intentional. But I think we were efficient with our time. We got through what we needed to get through. Stream Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Stream Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We're going to have a dandy of an old time. We've been having killer streams lately, like I said. It is still September. If you want to sub to your boy or give some subs, I never ask. I don't demand. I don't require, but I appreciate thoroughly. Um, anything to show support, even if you guys just come by and drop a follow. Um, so that's it. Like, subscribe to YouTube. Comment down below who you think is Friday's collection reward. If you're right... I'll like your comment. I don't know. I'm not giving you anything. But that's it, guys. See you later. Enjoy the game. Talk to you next week.